Welcome everyone to another Planet Coaster 2 video. Today we're going to talk about a topic that so, so many of you have been commenting about. The Oswald Eugene counter or the complexity meter for those of you who have played also Planet Zoo. Now, this is a counter that limits the amount of pieces you can use on the console version. We're going a little bit deeper in that in a second, but I just want to make a very clear framing and a very clear context for today's video. So, as of the demo we've seen a couple of weeks ago, as a you know group of creators have been shown a demo from actual gameplay, they have not been saying anything about it or have not shown anything about it. Everything we are going to discuss today is based on the previous two console releases of the game, but also um, we are going to talk about one thing that is confirmed and that is the cross-platform compatibility of the game. So just to make that very clear, okay, I'm basing all the information in this video on what we already know from old games and from the other console games and just tying together the info we have, just to make sure because people have been uh, increasingly annoyed about, uh, you know, how videos are framed. So again, I have seen a demo, I know a lot of things that haven't been shown or said yet in the official post, but this is not a part of it, just to make that very clear. Okay, now let's go back to the piece itself, the complexity meter or the Oswald Eugene counter. Those are um, limitations for console versions. Now, we have to first of all talk about the compatibility with the old systems. Planet Coaster Console Edition has been released also for the new gen, but also for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Planet Zoo Console Edition, however, hasn't been released on the old gen anymore. And the same goes for the new game. Planet Coaster 2 will only be available on the current gen, which is the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox X series, or the Xbox series, how it's called. Now, this also means that by default, the uh, Oswald Eugene counter will already be, even if it's the same as in Planet Zoo, much, much, much higher and much, much more, um, than, I, I don't want to say limitless, but uh, there's a lot more pieces you can use in comparison. I've played both. I've played, uh, played the Planet Coaster console version on PlayStation 4, and I've played the um, wonderful Planet Zoo console edition on the Xbox X series. Now, this means I already have the comparison between between those two, and honestly, it's a huge leap forward. You know, um, the zoos you can build, they are, they are not massive, but they are, well, a lot, lot bigger, and even if they've just taken that and optimized that slightly, um, I would say that this already is a huge win. Now, let's make a little break here and say we are now up to a completely new situation. I am relatively sure that there will be some sort of limitation in Planet Coaster 2 for consoles to maintain a certain performance. I don't actually know how exactly it's going to work on console if you wouldn't have that. Um, so if you can still go into having these huge frame issues or not, if they have to maintain. I know in the past there was a certain requirement from the console providers that games have to at least hit a certain FPS on average to be listed in the shops. I'm not sure if that still is the case. Um, I have no info on that. I can't find any more like newer sources to that. So if this still is the case, obviously Frontier needs to provide a certain limitation that the game at least has an average FPS of whatever 25. I don't know what the limitation is, as I said. Now, looking at the performance and looking on to the hardware that these consoles are running, um, we, we, you know, we could say they are a, let's say, above average gaming PC of 2020 to something like that, you know? It's definitely not a high-end gaming PC of 2024 or so, um, obviously, because this gen of consoles is already quite something older. And we can all expect that next year there is potentially a pro version coming of both systems. So maybe Frontier does already know that we know, because if you develop for console, you may already have this information at hand and they have the possibility to make this counter even bigger and even more limitless for the well, is that this the current gen pro versions? I don't know. Uh, however, as always, as we know, next year is GTA 6 coming, and it, the history has shown that whenever a new GTA pops onto the market of consoles, there is going to be a way more powerful console available, even if it's like maybe it's the next gen, as it was with the Xbox 360 back in the day and PS3, or it's a pro version of either counterpart. So. This is the first part I wanted to quickly talk about. The technology of the console itself is a limiting factor. 
we, we can talk about its you know advantages and I, I know that a lot of people love it but there is a limitation because it's a closed system and it's a limited system you know uh, you can't do that much and you can't upgrade your console in that way you can do with PC and honestly there is no such an expectation management on PC that you have a certain average FPS PC players are more used to having laggy games if their system isn't good enough you know um, I think it's really an expectation management thing here now, let's quickly talk about what I would expect from everything we know so far. So, the fact that this whole thing is cross-platform, and there is one big fear in the community that also the PC version is going to get a complexity meter or a limiting whatever counter, a piece count or something. This may very well be the case, but it's, it's not going to be an issue at all. Like, these things, which are only limiting certain piece counts, times or whatever, are the things that are going to be modded in no time. Like not a week in or so, PC players will be able to play without a piece count uh, limitation anyway. So I'm not really thinking that Frontier will do it because it, there's no real reason to do that. But the other part we have to look into is, as I said a couple seconds earlier, the cross-platform compatibility. My god, these words today is a complicated video because of so many complicated words. Now, <laughs> English is not my first language, okay? Um, so what I want to really get across is that we will face a little bit of a piece count issue by default <laughs> because now Planet Coaster PC players will be able to share blueprints with other players out there on console. Now, the same happened already on console. People on the same system could share uh, their blueprints via the um, workshop. However, these blueprints most likely weren't too super themed or super detailed because building on console is a little bit more finicky than it is on PC. It's just like it's super well uh, implemented. I still do love the circular module and all these kind of things on console. I think it's amongst the best realizations of a UI for such a complex game I've ever seen. But, it, you know, naturally it cannot really keep up with how a computer system like the PC, also with copy paste and all these uh, things work. It's not really that easy. So, why do I talk about this even? It's pretty obvious. You will have blueprints that are made by PC players and you will get, you will get toilets that will have 4,000 pieces. And I'm not even joking. PC players and Planet Coaster players in general are very detail obsessed and you will be able to grab these blueprints and plop them into your parks even on console. And this will naturally bring the whole thing up to a new dimension. But there's one thing that was shown during the presentation that we have encountered, the demo. And I've showed that already in some other videos. And that was the brand new way how you use blueprints on rides. I have to be very precise here for, because I, I don't know what, have you, uh, what you guys have already seen, how many videos you have already watched. But there is a new system. You can even see a tiny bit of it in the trailer, which I'm going to have in this video here as a backdrop for you now, where they take a blueprint of a submarine and they plop it on top of the teacup ride. And this will be then attached to the teacup ride. As we've already talked about, these blueprints will be available also on a coaster train. So you can plop blueprints on your coaster train. They automatically scale down and will be part of the coaster train. I feel like this is such an important thing that has been overlooked so far because they must have found something that makes the piece count not so relevant anymore. Let me quickly elaborate on that. If you have a piece by piece build blueprint in Planet Coaster 1, it was horrendous to the performance. The more pieces in a smaller area came together and the more they overlapped and intersect with each, with each other, the more the performance suffered. In Planet Zoo, that was already a bajillion times better. Like, the, they have found something to make it so much better. If you look, for example, at my uh, Zoo Sicily or Yosemite Valley that contains, I don't know, three, four, six times the amount of pieces that Koali Beach had and it still runs very, very fine. They have already found something six years ago. Now, looking at this now, having those blueprints put on a already animated ride and make this be animated with the other thing together. And if they allow us to put blueprints even on rides, making the available pieces even more used in your park and still maintaining a certain performance, 
they may have found something in the engine to, and if you are familiar with 3D modeling in general, they must have found something to bake certain elements together. Just quickly explaining what baking means. If you have um, an object that is made out of many smaller objects, naturally these smaller objects all merge into one. And for the system, if you render this, it would be very much easy on the engine if you only render what you see. So that means the outside. So if you bake it, basically what happens is that all the geometry that is intersecting is becoming one and everything that you don't see in the inside of the object. So um, just a, a very obvious example is you have like two planks that you move into one because you want to have a new length. So let's say you've got two one meter planks and you want to make a plank that is 1.5 meters. So you move them both into each other so that 25% of each is intersecting, okay? So that then would basically create a overall 1.5 meter element. However, it's going to be like for the logic how it was in Planet Coaster, it is two pieces and the vertices and the geometry in these intersecting area in the middle is creating a huge issue for the rendering because both of these things have to be rendered simultaneously. If you bake this, this middle part will be baked together with the entire piece and it's becoming one piece for the engine and for everything, you know, to deal with that. And if they have found a way to do that for the rides, maybe this means we can now also bake blueprints. And again, this is speculative at this point, but I think there is a good... Um, hope that this will be a lot easier and a lot better on the engine simply because of the fact that they have been able to figure something out for the rides because in order to animate a thing and now it's becoming a bit more technical here but I feel like it's super important to understand imagine you have a blueprint of like for example my elephants I've built in Koali Beach they are I don't know how many pieces that were eight to nine hundred pieces and just imagine that an engine needs to move every single one of these 800 pieces simultaneously in the right angle at the right pace with the right lighting with the right together that is almost impossible so if if you know the system isn't baking this together and it's actually treating every single object as a single object the amount of calculation power that needs to go into that single blueprint on top of your right in order to make it rotate with your right at the same time pace and blah 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 it, it, this alone would already cause many systems to to start to lag so they must have found a way to overcome this issue by creating a new entity and i think this is what happened and now coming back to the oswald eugene counter Obviously, this is a great thing um, when it comes to, to calculating how many pieces also the console has to deal with. So maybe you will have a chance to say at a certain point, this is my shop. I have built this shop out of 2,000 pieces and I'm fine with it and I don't want to edit this anymore. Bam, bake it. And so 2,000 pieces become one. Well, not technically one, it's you know, one more advanced piece with a lot more vertices than a simple plank, but still one piece. And if that's the case, again, very speculative, it would mean that either the calculator is completely gone or you can actually make a huge zoo or a zoo park. Sorry, I'm, I'm still playing zoo, you know. Um, I was just building in Planet Zoo, so forgive me. Um, a huge park that you're very happy with. You're at 90%, let's say, but you have never baked or never, never saved any of your blueprints. You just have kept building. And then you go in and you take all your coaster um, buildings and, and all your shops and your shelters and all your pool whatevers and towers and stuff, and you bake them all. And all of a sudden, the 90% go down back again to 30%. This is something I can very well imagine that this is going to be the case and I certainly do hope so because that would make our all lives so much more easy not only on console but also on PC and who am I to say that this would be a bad thing you know how great would this be because a good performance on console is actually meaning an even greater performance on high-end PCs which is what we all want okay um, I'm the last person to, uh, to say that console players shouldn't have a good, or that I don't care about the performance on console. I very much do, because again, as, as much as I love the fact that everyone is involved, I want everyone to have the best experience out there. So meaning, the best experience is, the, is on the weakest system, and the better this is, the better it is for everyone. 
Um, so yeah, that should be enough. A bit of a deep dive into the system of the complexity meter, where this is coming from. I hope I could enlighten you a little bit of how the system worked in the past and why they had to put a limitation on, but why I do think it's maybe not going to become such a huge issue. The only thing we have to consider is, unfortunately, and this is I'm pretty sure that this is going to be the case, we will be limited again in the amount of pieces within one single blueprint. Again, just a bit of context here. For those of you who have played Planet Zoo, you know that there was a trick to overcome the limit. In Planet Zoo, the limit of blueprints is still 4,000 as far as I know, but um, no one was using that anymore because you could save habitats. So what everyone did is they built their blueprints and then just dragged the habitat around, no matter if you wanted to build a habitat or not. And then whatever was within the borders of the habitat was saved as a blueprint and you could literally save up to 40,000 pieces within that one habitat, which I totally did. <laughs> um, and this is the way how people overcame uh, the um, limitation of blueprints. So blueprint limitation on, con uh, on Planet Zoo wasn't a big deal at all because it wasn't a deal at all. Um, but now it will become a deal again. Um, let's see if they maybe increase it to 8,000. Just a bit of trivia. In Planet Coaster we started with a blueprint amount of 1,000 pieces. They quickly enlarged up to 2,000 pieces and then later in the development they even went one step ahead and gave it uh, to uh, gave us the limitation of 4,000 pieces which was a huge um, win in the community. Everyone was super happy about this. So that's been it. I really hope you guys found this interesting. Let me know in the comments down below how your experience was so far with the Oswald uh, Eugene counter or the complexity meter on Planet Coaster, uh, Planet Zoo console edition. I would be very uh, interested to learn how much you were uh, able to build and how it influenced your experience. So let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching as always. And uh, yeah, just as always, a little reminder, if you guys uh, want to see more of Planet Coaster 2, Planet Zoo, building games, please consider subscribing to the channel. This would help me so much. And we are on the way to 100K. I really would love to reach that this year. And you are the ones that can help me achieve that. So um, just press that button. Thank you so much. And also have a wonderful weekend. We see each other in the next episode. Have a good one and goodbye.